Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss the deposition of Ghislaine Maxwell. This was released yesterday. So I sat down and the paralegal and me sat down and read the 400 plus pages in one sitting and made notes on things that maybe the, the mainstream media won't talk about or things that I felt were pertinent to discuss. So keep in mind this deposition is in a defamation case where Virginia is alleging that Ghislaine def defamed her. Because when Virginia came forth with her stories about Jeffrey and Ghislaine, she said her truth and Ghislaine allegedly called her a liar. Actually, she called her a liar. So then J Virginia turns around and sues her for def defamation, which opens up all these depositions, which is quite lovely in a way because then you, they can't dodge these and they have to answer the questions. And if you know anything about depositions, you know that sometimes they can be fishing expeditions. There was seemingly a time limit on this deposition. So the great attorneys involved uh, spent their time wisely and tried not to get too derailed, but it's hard for someone who's not interested, not familiar with reading depositions to plow through all the crap and the arguing back and forth and all the diversions to focus on what's important. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go back to April 22nd, 2016. We're at 575 Lexington Avenue in New York. Sigrid McCauley of Boyce, Schiller, and Flexner is representing Virginia, Ma Virginia Roberts against Ghislaine Maxwell. Maxwell is represented by Jeff Pegalusia and Laura Menninger. Laura Menninger is a well-known attorney, okay? So these are not slacker attorneys. So I also want to add that in 2016, yes, we were aware in the public that the other accusers were coming forward, not only against Jeffrey Epstein, but also against Ghislaine, all right? But at that time, we didn't have Netflix specials and things like that, all right? So in my opinion, Ghislaine was quite irritated when Virginia came forth with her truth against Jeffrey and Ghislaine. So Ghislaine retaliated both with her mouth and with her libeling, allegedly, through her attorneys and called Virginia a liar. So Virginia, thinking I have the truth on my side, sues Ghislaine for defamation. That's how we get into these depots. These depots weren't about Jeffrey per se. All right, well, it isn't about his criminal issues, it's about defamation. However, depositions can be a fishing expedition. Seems to me that there were some parameters on this. I could be wrong. For example, there's a time parameter because they, they always keep talking about how much time's left. There's also some questions I definitely would have asked and they weren't asked, so I'm guessing that there were some parameters on what was going to be discussed at that deposition. So let's get into it. Let's get into some of the basics. Here's a question, and some of these are going to be paraphrased, and some of them I'm going to pull it up and give you line by line what it is, word for word. So one question to Ghislaine, um, Sigrid, Sigrid McCauley is the one asking the questions, and Ghislaine is answering them, and the question is, how long did you work for Mr. Epstein? So it's getting a time frame. And paraphrase Ghislaine says essentially from 1992 into 2002 to 2003. That's what she says initially. That that's what when she worked for Epstein, and then she says it quote lessened considerably as time went on, 2002 to 2003, but that she was still doing quote nominal work until 2008 2009. So Ghislaine was in his life from 1992 to 2009, all right? That's according to her words. Then, Ghislaine claims her duties for Jeffrey were that she helped decorate his houses and hiring the staff to run the houses, all right? So she compares herself, she likens herself to a general contractor when the general contractor is going through construction. This is her first iteration of what she does for Jeffrey. 
She doesn't say I'm a house manager or I'm an office manager for his houses. She talks about decorating the houses and hiring the staff to run the houses and she likens herself to a general contractor. All right, fair enough. Then Ghislaine claims that she never hired anyone under the age of 18. All right, her words that came, the only children who came over, all right, were invitees of friends. So in other words, she initially claims that she never hired anyone that was under the age of 18. Later on, we're going to nitpick about whether she hired somebody or whether she interviewed somebody. It, shades of Bill Clinton here, all right? Very shade. She tries to be Bill Clinton here with the what is is and all that stuff. I could have filmed this yesterday. I was so head up. I was pulling my ponytail. I ate a whole batch of fries. I picked my face. I, I did self-soothing maneuvers. I was highly irritated by this deposition. I feel that Sigrid earned every penny that she may get, has gotten, whatever. Um, yeah, this irritated the living you-know-what out of me. Uh, according to Ghislaine in this deposition, Virginia Roberts held herself out as a masseuse and invited herself to come over and give a massage. That's her initial statement. Virginia Roberts, some 17-year-old girl, held herself out as a masseuse and invited herself essentially over to Jeffrey's Palm Beach Mansion, okay, to give a massage. Sigrid is trying to pin Ghislaine down as to how an underage girl got to Jeffrey's house, all right? And this is the answer that's given. Miss Roberts held herself out to be a masseuse and her mother drove her over to the house. I have a comment because I started making notes because I started getting very frustrated. What a pro. What a pro this masseuse is. The 17 year old masseuse that she needs mommy and daddy to come and show for her back and forth. I mean, she's just a pro, right? This is exactly who you want to hire for a professional man to have his, his massages, right? I'm going to make snarky comments. You don't want the snarky comments. This isn't the video for you because this is annoying and I'm going to say what I think. When Sigrid's trying to get the story from Ghislaine's own mouth about how Virginia, the 17-year-old girl from Mar-a-Lago, okay, which of course Ghislaine doesn't even remember meeting her at Mar-a-Lago initially, all right, how she got to Jeffrey's place and this is what Ghislaine says, quote, I spoke to her mother outside of the house and she, what I don't recall is exactly what happened because I was talking to her mother the entire time that she was in the house. So the story that Ghislaine's going with in 2016 is that this girl appears, okay, because she doesn't want to admit that she got her from Mar-a-Lago or remember, she just doesn't remember. But she held herself out as a masseuse. Where was she? Mar-a-Lago? I mean, it, it's, it defies comprehension. So Ghislaine is at this house. The girl drives up with her mother. I mean, this is me speculating, but through, through the lines of the deposition, that then Ghislaine is talking to the mother of Virginia the whole entire time that Virginia is giving a massage to Jeffrey. Hence, putting her away from the scene of a possible crime. Because... Virginia alleges that she was sexually abused by Jeffrey Epstein the very first time she went over to give him a massage. All right. She also alleges that Ghislaine had a part in it. So Ghislaine wants to put herself, in my opinion, in as much distance from this event as possible. How can she best do that? We'll put herself with Virginia's mother outside of the house. I have no idea what the deposition of Virginia's mother reveals. Who knows? But the, the thing is, is Virginia at one point had said her father had given her a ride. Could it have been her father picked her up and her mother drove her? Could have possibly been that. I do not know. What I do know, sorry for the clanking, now I realize this is annoying. What I do know is that Ghislaine is using this fact that it was the mother, not the father, to pr prove what a horrible liar Virginia is. And if I'm going to read to you 
the, what she's put into the record, the name she has called Virginia. I'm also going to posit to you, in my opinion, that's the finest form of projection ever. These things that she's calling this young girl at the time could be applied to herself. This is what Ghislaine says. Virginia lied 100% about absolutely everything that took place in that first meeting. She has lied repeatedly, often, and is just an awful fantasist. She goes on to complain. What you will find out through the deposition is that in Ghislaine's mind, since Virginia lied about her mother driving her over, not her father, and about Ghislaine doing something to her at that first meeting, maybe having a second meeting, she doesn't admit to that, but since that happened, nothing she says is true, and therefore she's a fantasist, she's a liar, I can't believe anything she says. If she says the sky is blue, it's a lie. And you might think, Thielen, you're exaggerating. No, I am not. Read the deposition. She will actually admit it. If she says it, it's a lie. She's a liar. I mean, it's like a little kid that puts her hand over her ears and goes, la, 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 I'm not hearing you. Yeah, it's that bad. I'm going to take this off because this is clanky. All right. So, Ghislaine denies giving massage to Jeffrey Epstein with a female under the age of date 18. Denies observing Jeffrey Epstein ever having a massage by an individual under the age of 18. Denies saying the younger the better. Denies asking Virginia Roberts to recruit females um, regarding minors. Um, she says, how would I know if somebody's in the house? So in other words, Ghislaine at very conveniently throughout this whole deposition puts herself away from the Palm Beach mansion. You know, how do I know what Jeffrey was doing up there? How do I know if I wasn't in the house? How do I know? Okay, you have... All these people now have come forth in retrospect, talking about, I wouldn't say dragon woman, but you know what I mean? Like she was micromanaging a lot of things. And all of a sudden this woman is like, how would I know? I was barely there. I was two, there two days that year. Which is it? I, I purport to you, look at the plane logs. Look at the pilot's logs. Where you see GM, that was Ghislaine Maxwell. Sorry, you could sit there and say it was George Mitchell or whoever name you want to come up with. It was Ghislaine Maxwell. In my opinion, she was there. <laughs> Regarding the topless girls at Jeffrey Epstein's home, this is what she says, quote, Sometimes people in the privacy of a house and in the swimming pool, I've seen people from time to time take their top off. Naked people around the people at any frequent period of time, I've never seen that. So she's copping to the fact that, you know, maybe there was some topless sunbathing or, you know, if you're outside and in the privacy of your own home, someone might be taking their top off. But other than that, I don't know what you're talking about. Now keep in mind the police video walking through Jeffrey Epstein's mansion right when the first accuser came and accused him and they took their photos over there and they took their video cameras through what was on his walls naked pictures of women not art photos purchased from uh the met nude pictures of women that he knew let's continue galane maxwell confronted with her own emails claims that she met virginia roberts at mar-a-lago it's in her own emails. I'm sorry. This is a frustrating deposition because Ghislaine initially in this deposition kind of talks about a gentleman's club. She doesn't say Mar-a-Lago. So when then Sigrid plops down Ghislaine's own emails in front of her and in which the email Ghislaine claims she met Virginia Roberts at Mar-a-Lago. What does Ghislaine do? She blames Virginia. La, 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 la. Yeah, exactly. Is this what she says? So by 2011, Ms. Roberts had already perpetrated so many lies and stories. It's hard for me to accurately tell you today the testimony I give you today. Okay. So you're saying... Since Virginia Roberts was telling lies about your first meeting with her, 
in theory, it could have been the second meeting that she had sexual relations with Ghislaine. I mean, this is, our, this is arguendo. But if she lied at any point about who dropped her off, was it mother or dad? Maybe mom dropped her off, maybe dad took her home, okay? That therefore taints the whole entire story. Now she's a liar about every single thing. And even though Ghislaine's own email what has her email address, and she admits it, yeah, 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 in 2011 said that she met Virginia Roberts, essentially interviewed her or whatever way you want to massage those words to pick her from Mar-a-Lago and lure her over to Jeffrey's Palm Beach Manson in 2000, you know, she's talking about this in 2011 that it happened in the past. It doesn't matter what she wrote in 2011 because Virginia had put all that shit in her mind. Now, do you start to see why I'm getting irritated with this deposition? Because it defies logic. Ghislaine's British. Can I use a, a British expression? The bloody cheek of this woman. The cheek, the gall, the bloody cheek of this woman. How, how Sigrid remained very professional and calm. Uh, so then she queries Maxwell about a 13-year-old the name is redacted. By the way, a lot of these folks have already come forward in the public domain, and you can very easily figure out exactly who is redacted. Sometimes, sometimes the redactions make no sense because if you have, say, Prince Andrew, it says, doot, doot, you got two separate redactions, and it talks about certain things around, say, London or whatever, so you know exactly who they're talking about. Bill Clinton, doot, doot. You know exactly who they're talking about. You know, the flight log show where they flew where when Bill was flying to certain countries. So you know, exactly, you know exactly who they're talking about. Why with the redactions? Those are stupid. I do understand why you would redact a 13-year-old's testimony. Now they're, you know, in their late 20s or early 30s. Heck, I don't know. But what I'm saying is we know who these folks are because they've come forward and given their statements against Jeffrey. So anyway... Maxwell's queried about a 13-year-old, the name is redacted, and Maxwell is full of I don't recalls, I can't recollects. She denies having sex with this 13-year-old as the 13-year-old has sworn under oath. She denies observing Jeffrey Epstein having sex with a 13-year-old. She denies being in an orgy with a 13-year-old. Denial, 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 which of course is what you expect. Then we're, we're going to move on to Nadia Marcinkova. Nadia, in my opinion, was someone that was recruited, um, hired by Jeffrey when she was extremely young from a different country. This is what I understand. I could be wrong. Nadia also is, I believe, a pilot now and has a legitimate business now. You got to, the way I think of this is when you have a Dracula and you have a Renfield and the Dracula takes you as a child and does things to you and makes you do things to other children perhaps this is this is me just woodshedding at what point does the victim become a perpetrator i don't know i'm not here to speak bad about nadia all i know as nadia was 14 years old and she was first involved with jeffrey epstein that's that's the comments here in this deposition and so Ghislaine is asked if Nadia looked like a child, 14 years old. Did she look like a child when she first met her? And Ghislaine says, no. Ghislaine Maxwell denies arranging a visa for Nadia Marcinkova. I believe her name is redacted here, but wasn't redacted in the previous sentence. So <laughs> that's bad on you guys for your crappy redacting. Ghislaine claims, quote, I have no idea if Nadia recruited other girls for sex with Jeffrey Epstein. Ghislaine claims that she doesn't recall having um, redacted, which is seemingly Nadia, um, on the plane with her. But all you gotta do is look at the flight logs. You have Nadia, you have a GM, a Ghislaine, you have a Jeffrey. It, 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 it's not rocket science. It really isn't. And Nadia... and. When you look at the flight logs, if you choose to look at them, I don't suggest you look at the ones that were created by using where they took a like an OCR and then it's all gar garbledy gook. Look at the original flight logs. It took me about a month of 
pure research, like it was my full-time job looking at the flight logs, investigating every name, comparing it to the black book, figuring out who really was who. The first couple times are mentioned if they weren't, okay, J.E. was always Jeffrey, G.M. was always Ghislaine. And if anybody else flew with those same initials, their name was in full. Sometimes sounded out like somebody used uh, phonics, you know what I mean? Um, the names were spelled horribly. That's one reason why folks uh, don't know who some of these folks are. It's, it's really, truly not a mystery. You compare it to the Black Book, you compare it to the newspaper articles of where they flew around with these certain folks. It, it, it's not hard to figure it out. But having said that, Ghislaine is GM, I would say, 99% of the time. She then tries to counter that, saying, oh, these aren't federal records. And, and somebody was taking the names every single time somebody rode on the plane. And sometimes when things, in my opinion, were sketchy, they would have, you know, J-E, J-M, you know, Nadia, whoever, Virginia, and then they'd say, and five others. And you're like, who are the five others? You know, I, by the way, and then when some of them don't come back, you're like, what, what happened to them? They went to New Mexico, they didn't come back, did they stay there? What? Those flight logs are a whole nother ball of wax, but what I want to say is, I do not believe that Ghislaine was honest in this deposition, my opinion. So Ghislaine says at the time that Nadia, she was with him, that Ghislaine believes that she traveled with him and helped him with his travel arrangements. Now, let's back this up. Let's, I said, laugh out loud a teenager. Why in the world? You just admitted that, that the record is showing that Nadia was 14 years old. And other records show that she came from another country, that she was hired, one could argue, bought. Poor thing. My, my, I feel sorry for her. Okay, so you get this child, this teenager, from another country, and she's going to be doing your travel arrangements at age 14. You want me to believe that? Like, are you serious? Are you serious? So Ghislaine admits to cash being kept around the houses to pay for massage therapy. And she said they get paid between $100 to $200. And of course, then Sigrid's trying to ferret out, you know, was it because, you know, they gave sexual relations, the price would go up? You know, of course, she gets nowhere with that kind of question because... So then Ghislaine says, I have never seen anybody have sexual intercourse with Jeffrey ever. Sigrid asks, has redacted, given a statement to the police about you, that would be Ghislaine Maxwell, performing sexual acts on her. And Ghislaine says, I've not heard that. You get a lot of, I don't recalls, I don't remember, I have never heard that. I think if somebody accused me of, ha of performing a sexual act on them, I think I'd know about it. I think I'd have opinions about it. I think I'd have my attorneys on that, wouldn't you? So then, Miss McCauley questions about some redacted person that was allegedly hired to answer the phone. And Sigrid asks Ghislaine, did you ever tell X, that's a redacted person, that she would get extra money if she provided Jeffrey massages. I'm going to read you the full answer to this humdinger about whether this young person will get extra money if she just didn't just answer the phone that she provided Jeffrey massages. So how's she going to answer this one. This this was classic, okay? So let me pull it up. Did you ever tell Redacted that she would get extra money if she provided Jeffrey massages? Here's the answer. I was always happy to give career advice to people, and I think that becoming someone in the healthcare profession, either exercise instructor or nutritionist or professional massage therapist, is an excellent job opportunity. Hourly wages around seven, eight, and nine dollars. And as a professional health care provider, you can earn somewhere between, as we've established, a hundred to two hundred dollars. As we have established, 
100 to 200 dollars and to be able to travel and have a job that pays that is a wonderful job opportunity so in the context of advising people for opportunities for work it is possible that i would have said that she should explore that option guys that is the that's that that's what she was running it's right there that is her mindset to interview and perhaps hire these people. It's a job opportunity. In my opinion, I wonder if pimps use that same kind of uh, thinking. I mean, madams, pimps, what, what, that's my opinion. I, I'm allowed to have my opinion. Maxwell then denies having sets of outfits for massage therapists to wear. Okay, have you ever had a massage? I've had one professional massage. Do you think I dictated to the person who gave me a massage what the hell they were gonna wear? Like schoolgirl outfits or patent leather outfits? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course she denies that. Question, did you have a basket of sex toys at the Palm Beach house? Answer, I don't recollect. She wants definitions of baskets. She wants definitions of sex toys. She's Bill Clintoning all over the place. And by the way, I, on some level, I do support Bill Clinton. I mean, to some degree, not his sexual shenanigans. But having said that, I mean, uh, yeah, I see. I, I call it like I see it. I mean, that's crazy. So when asking whether she remembered Virginia, whether she knew Virginia, whether she hired Virginia, whether she interviewed Virginia, all this stuff. What Ghislaine says is, quote, what I can say is that I barely would remember her. If not for all this rubbish, I probably wouldn't remember her at all. She was so inconsequential. That's my adding. Except that she did come from time to time but I don't recollect her coming as often as she portrayed herself. Sigurd asks, are you aware that over 30 underage minors gave testimony to police, in other words, under oath, that they were engaged in sexual activity during massages? The police report is shown, okay? Ghislaine says, after she takes time to read these police reports, I read the police report. That's all I can testify to. Macaulay try, Sigrid tries to take Ghislaine through all this information, all these documents, all these reports, and try to get her to admit she likely was there in the Palm Beach home when some of these 30 odd random minors were being sexually abused. But you know what her answer to all this is? What did I say? Virginia lies, Virginia lies, Virginia lies. I kid you not. I kid you not. So she, she insists that she was in the house only limited times. Quote, did you ever consider yourself his girlfriend? All right, let's get personal. Hell, depositions allow a heck of a lot more than what's asked here. Personally, I would ask, I would ask her this. Did Jeffrey have an egg-shaped penis, Ghislaine? You were his girlfriend. You, you, or you said you had sexual relations with Jeffrey. Did he have an egg-shaped penis? I don't recall. Oh, you don't recall a, a, a normal penis and an egg, an egg shaped penis? Well, yeah, he did. Uh, this is this is riffing. Okay, how about that? Some of these thirty odd girls say that Jeffrey had an egg shaped penis, and they don't know each other. So how would they know that he had an egg shaped penis unless they saw his egg shaped penis and they were underage? So how does that work in your worldview? Virginia lies. Virginia lies. Virginia lies. I mean, at some point, the truth has to hit you in the face. How are you going to know he's got an egg-shaped penis unless you've seen his egg-shaped penis? That's the kind of stuff I would ask. That little, that little uh, sidebar that I just gave you, 
is the kind of shit I would ask. I don't know if that was off the table. Don't know. All right. So did you ever consider yourself Jeffrey's girlfriend? Were you his girlfriend? Answer. There were times when I would have liked to think of myself as his girlfriend. And then at that time period is then uh, narrowed down to the early 1900s. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Answer. There were times I would have liked to have think of myself as his girlfriend. And then she narrows that down to the early 1990s. Oh, God, I swear to God, I've been looking at stuff that's um, very old lately. I've been doing research, and yeah, sorry. So, Ghislaine attempts to explain different things, and she says, quote, I think you have to understand a massage. Perhaps you're not really familiar with what a massage is. That's what she says to Sigrid. And Sigrid says, I am. I don't need a lecture on massage. <laughs> Girl, that ain't that the truth. It, it's really, honestly, it's not that deep. You know, so it was like, you know what Ghislaine says to that? Oh, I think you do. And, and so here, so think, let's go through this again. Ghislaine says, you know, I think, I think you understand, you, you have to understand massage. Perhaps you're not really familiar with what a massage is. And, and, <laughs> and Sugar goes, I am. I don't need a lecture on massage. And, you know, Galenga, I think you do. I think you do. Dominatrix Galen, I think you need a lecture on massage. Who is this woman? Who does she think she is? Does she think she's royalty? Like, she is just thinks. She thinks quite highly of herself. She really does. Like, that this attorney doesn't know what a basic massage entails. I mean, there's different kinds of massage. But so there, there's a line where you're getting a happy ending and you're not. Or you're massaging, where the person massaging is naked when they're underage. I mean, it's really, truly not that deep. You don't need to have a full lecture on massage to get to the point of whether this is a molestation, rape. You know, those words that we're not supposed to say on YouTube. Really. So anyway, Ghislaine claims she met Jeffrey Epstein in 1991. There's some people out there in the blogosphere that claim she met him earlier. She answers that, that Jeffrey Epstein did not know her father, Robert Maxwell, th that some friend introduced Ghislaine to um, Jeffrey, and that in 1992, Ghislaine began working for Jeffrey and that they were friendly. Ghislaine does not recall how much Jeffrey Epstein paid her, try to uh, get her to narrow it down, and I say to that, sure, Jan, you don't remember how much Jeffrey Epstein paid you, um, but she uh, eventually concedes between a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, I guess, annually, um, that he bought her a townhouse and um, that she worked for it through loans. Ghislaine Maxwell also obtained a pilot license in 1998 or 1999. That is essentially well known in the record um, because Jeffrey not only had the Lolita Express, the bigger plane, he also had a smaller plane. Sometimes he had them both in operation, sometimes he didn't. He also had helicopters. So Ghislaine says she operated the helicopter, sorry. Someone's cooking something in the kitchen and the alarm's going off. I gotta say, that's one reason I'm in here, guys. I realize that doing this kind of a discussion is not really appropriate to be doing it from the bedroom, but we have. My man is doing musician stuff on the porch that you see me film in. That's not gonna happen for me to film out there. The kitchen and the den area is too noisy, filmed with my mother. Um, the back of the house, we've got another neighbor that plays um, car shop. And if you've ever heard, like, where someone's really doing work on their cars, the tools, and the, yeah, I, you can't, you can't film. So this is my, my spot to film with some kind of piece. Um, and the days that I can film elsewhere, I do. Sorry, I know it's unprofessional. I mean, what can I do? You do, it's either you don't film or you film where you can, so. So we talked about how she got her pilot's license, how she focused on piloting the helicopter. There's like, uh, we're gonna go on a theme alerts here. going up. We're gonna, beep, we're beep, gonna beep. 
Keep it like a theme here. Oh my god, I'm not even like this halfway one. through this shit. I'm like losing it literally. This is gonna stay in. You wanna wag your pieces around too? Yeah. I get crap, you know, honestly, babe, I get crap for filming in the bedroom. And now I, I, now I want to put it out there so, like, <laughs> everyone can see. Oh. Oh. I get crap. I know I get crap. It's unprofessional. I mean, it's like, what, what are you going to do? I mean, it's like the porch, it's raining, the kitchen, there's cooking. I mean, I don't know. It's what it is, what it is. Love you. Okay. Alright, let's get back to it. So let's get into it. And on pages 106 to 117 in the deposition, in my opinion, Prince Andrew is the one that's redacted on most of those blacked out, especially when they have two Prince Andrew. Okay, that's my opinion. Um, she denies introducing this individual that's redacted um, to Jeffrey, and she's quite huffy. She's quite huffy about it. Yeah. And you know what she even says? Are we tallying the lies? In other words, like the lies of Virginia. Are we tallying the lies? And you know what I have to say is yes. Yes, ma'am. I was going to say yes, girl. Yes, ma'am. I am tallying your lies. I am tallying your lies. I hope everybody else is too. Okay. So when confronted with the flight logs again, Ghislaine Maxwell um, says, how do you know GM is me? Because a lot of the time, sometimes it actually has it spelled out, but, but most of the time it's J-E and J and G-M are right beside each other. They're the first people listed. And she, she queries, like, how do you, how, you know, prove it? How, how prove that G-M is me? And so Sigrid goes through and be like, okay, did you take this trip? You were in Thailand, weren't you? You know, oh, you know, it, it's hilarious. And then she just tries to basically say, you can't, you know, be sure that that's me, you know. So it, 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 it's starting to defy credulity. So it's getting to the point where you're starting to de deny what your eyes are saying. You know, like if, if you had someone that looked like me in a bed like this with the antique uh, spindles and you got all my artwork here, guys. All my bottle cap art with the resin inside and they're all individual. Okay, all this bottle cap art, you know, and you've got the turn on the red light, you know, lamp here, antiques, right? <laughs> Who else is going to have them and then all together, you know what I mean? Like, and the, and the humidor, it, it's stealing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because we're going to get to that point where it's literally going to show Prince Andrew and Virginia in Ghislaine's house with her banister and with her pictures. And she is going to be sitting there like deny like are you sure that's my painting well that does look like my painting it's like okay Ghislaine Maxwell she's flying with Virginia Roberts allegedly on these flight logs in my opinion and then they go into the trash pull what a trash pull is as most some folks might know whenever you put your trash at the easement at the curb it is no longer yours anymore. <laughs> so if there's documents in it you don't want anyone to peruse, if they were to peruse it, you must shred those documents. So what the police did when people started coming in way back saying, oh, I got molested at Jeffries, they started doing trash pulls from the Palm Beach trash, from his easement. And what did they find? They find little memos of people you know talking about oh you know so and so a girl coming over you know she might bring her friend that kind of crap you know diff all kinds of stuff it's all on the internet i can do a whole separate video on it very revealing some of those allegedly allegedly were written by galane you know what i mean setting up these chicks to come over but of course then and, and of course then she's going to deny that those were her so evidence regarding the trash pulls put put in, for, in front of her with the bait stamp the whole nine and she you know what she says this is not my handwriting this is not my handwriting sure Jan and then Ghislaine claims that she hardly ever recorded messages so that wasn't her job all these other things she's named are her jobs but 
Answering a phone and recording a message from someone she knew, like say Jean-Luc Brunel, that wasn't her job. <laughs> okay. So she says, quote, I never trained a female under the age of 18 at Jeffrey's home. So why was your name reflected on this message pad? Why? Why was someone taking a message and putting your name on it? Why? I mean, it's a mystery for the ages, right? If you don't, if you don't want to believe what's logical at Ozcam's razor, you know what I mean? Okay. So paraphrase question. Do you believe that Jeffrey Epstein sexually abused minors? This is an easy answer. Okay. This is where you know someone is just going to be obstinate. They're going to do the exact opposite just cause, because this is an easy give. Ghislaine, do you believe Jeffrey Epstein sexually abused minors? The answer is yes, because he has admitted to it. He admitted to the crime he was charged with. Now you can sit there and argue the semantics of it, but he pled guilty. Do you think she can answer that question? No, she won't answer it. She won't answer it the way a normal person would answer it, in my opinion. She goes, can you break that down? Can you explain what you mean? Do you believe Jeffrey Epstein sexually abused minors? Can you break that down? Uh, what do you need broken down? And you know what it ends up with? Answer, Virginia is a liar. Virginia, Virginia is a liar. So what she, she says she doesn't know what Jeffrey Epstein was accused of. I shit you not. She puts this in the deposition that she didn't know what Jeffrey was accused of. Yeah, go to a party allegedly that's thrown up in New York, the big hee hoff party when all his his chart, you know, he had served his time and everybody and didn't Prince Andrew allegedly come to say goodbye to his best buddy and tell him he couldn't be friends with him anymore and everybody threw a big party for Jeffrey and yet you didn't know what what he was in jail for? I mean, at some point, you just got to laugh you, or pull your hair out and eat a bunch of french fries in anger. But So, question is, do you know that he spent time in jail related to an issue with a minor? Do you know that, Ghislaine? I did not know that. Question. What do you think he was spending time in jail for? What do you think? Since you didn't know that, what, what, why do you think your homie was in jail? Why, why was he chilling in the Palm Beach jail then? What, what was he doing? Was he doing a documentary? What, why was he in jail, homie? This is me paraphrasing. Because, I mean, she's pretending she doesn't know anything about nothing. Answer. Like, that's what I'm saying. This is what mainstream news isn't going to gonna cover. The pure insanity of this de the answers in this depo. She says... I only knew he went to jail for, and then she pauses, it was alleged that he hired an underage prostitute. There's your answer. It was alleged that he hired an underage prostitute. What's an underage prostitute? You can't be an underage prostitute. You cannot. That is a child. That is sex trafficking. There you go. Right there. She doesn't want to say it. And so her default, again, I'm going to say it, that she goes on and on like someone with Tourette's is that Virginia is a liar. And you know, whenever somebody does that, I say la, like not L-I-A-R, L-A-H. She's a la. That, that's essentially what she says over and over. Virginia's a la. She's a la. She's a la. She's a la. She's a la. So, since Virginia lied about the fact that she got to Marl, uh, she got to Jeffrey's Palm Be Beach Mansion via her mother versus her father, according to Ghislaine, um, and that she put Ghislaine at the scene of a, of a molestation on her first trip to give Jeffrey Epstein a massage, since she lied about that, therefore every single thing that breathes out of her mouth is a liar is a lie, and Ghislaine doesn't even have to entertain a single damn thing. Some Toto. There you go. There you go. There's your answer. Quote, she is an absolute liar, and everything she says is a lie, and everything that stems from that is a lie. 
Question, are you aware that Jeffrey Epstein is a registered sex offender? Was he a sex, you know what the answer is? I am. So what's a lie? What's a lie? Was it Virginia that he was a registered sex offender over? That's my question. No. It's, it's very Bill Cosby-esque in my mind, where you have this group of people who at that time didn't know each other from Adam. You know, one girl might know another girl because she recruited from her from the from the elementary school to bring these girls to Jeffrey's lair and to get money. But these groups, these group of girls, they didn't know each other. And then after the fact, you know what I mean? After they got older and realized what had happened and whatever, they all are coming forth with different stories with proofs. What does that have to do with Virginia? absolutely nothing. Virginia was one of the first, not the first, one of the first to come forth with her story and definitely one of the first to name Madame Maxwell into it. And that is why, in my opinion, she's extremely butthurt about Virginia. Won't have anything to do with what Virginia says. So, question, why did you continue to maintain contact with Jeffrey Epstein after he pled guilty? So question, why did you continue to maintain contact with Jeffrey Epstein after he pled guilty? Answer, I'm a very loyal person, but she was paid. Okay, we go on to hear how she was still paid. Do you pay your loyal friends for being, <laughs> for being loyal friends? I mean, she admits to getting paid under a million dollars. And then she says it was less than 500000 in 2009. That's her words, not mine. Boy, that's a loyal friend. 500000 and you're really not even seeing his ass in 2009? Mm, that sounds almost like hush money to me. Or like, that. I mean, that's my opinion. I, I'm allowed to have it. Might not be true. $500,000. <laughs> Cuz she would never admit a number and they say a million. Oh no. No, not as much as a million. 500. Oh, not that much. So you know, she would hedge. I mean, where are the tax records? I mean, come on, folks. Let's put let's put all these ducks together. I mean, are these people just allowed to have funny money like monopoly money and just throw it around to all their pals for hush money or whatever? being paid to be a loyal friend. I mean, the cheek, the gall, I mean, you have a garage sale it, it, where I live. You have to pull a permit. <laughs> you can't even make that much money without having to tell the government <laughs> you made the money and that these jokers are getting less than $500,000 in a certain year to, <laughs> to be and not even see the guy very much and be a loyal friend. I mean, uh. okay, so I've changed the battery because I'm gonna plow through this because I'm not gonna do this twice, hopefully. So it sounds like I'm jumping around. Depots jump around. Jump around, jump around. That's how it works, all right? You keep people off their game. You jump around with topics. So they go back to the nude photo. Um, concept about the nude photos being around and who took the nude photos did you take nude photos and Ghislaine says that regarding taking nude photos so it's possible that I took pictures of people that were somehow semi or had some clothing on or no clothes on but at no time were any of the pictures remotely inappropriate so that that's her position because I do believe in my opinion that certain folks had said that Ghislaine had taken pictures of them nude and that those pictures were displayed around the house or whatever, put in photo albums or whatever. So she was being queried on that and that's the answer she gave. Okay, so by page 207, that's halfway through the deposition, Ghislaine is losing her crap. She's losing it. She's pounding the table with her hands. She's getting loud. And it is so noted by Sigrid McCauley 
let me pull that up for your edification. She's being asked questions about, they're showing her documents about how she had met Virginia um, at Mar-a-Lago and she gets very frustrated and she says, I think I already testified to that. What I remembered based on all the rubbish she has written and all the many articles I have read, maybe in the moment when I wrote that caused me to have that, but on reflections, I don't recall it as I sit here today. So she starts getting really mad and she starts pounding on the table with her fists and just carrying on, you know, making emphatic points. And so Ghislaine says, can we agree she was not the age she said? And can you put that in the press? That is obviously, manifestly, absolutely, totally a lie. And so Miss McClawley says, and I'm sure it was more dramatic than that. She says, I'm going to put on the record, Miss Maxwell, very inappropriately and very harshly pounded on our law firm table in an inappropriate manner. I ask that she take a deep breath and calm down. I know this is a difficult position, but physical assault or threats is not appropriate. So no pounding, no stomping, no, that's not appropriate. And then she's like, can I be clear? I didn't, I didn't threaten anybody. And so uh, basically the attorneys go back and forth and agree to take a break later on in the deposition. Ghislaine, you know, apologizes for her little outburst. Uh, but I just got to say, Sigrid, you were earning that money to have your little, your little witness throw in a little temper tantrum. Because I note that the attorney, her other, her defense attorney, um, her her attorney says it. Oh, I don't see she's done at the table. Like, so she apparently she really went for it. So here we have Ghislaine getting very upset, throwing a temper tantrum when shown with her own emails that are is now contradicting what she's saying at that day. And, you know, she's blaming Virginia's lies for tainting everything in her mind, in my opinion. And so here's what I would have said. You know, I would have questioned Glenn and said, you know, you said you're loyal to Jeffrey. Yeah. So you're loyal to a friend who is jailed for molesting a child. And of course, her side would have objected to that as argumentative and misstating evidence. But I would have put it on the record. So, so you're loyal to your friend who is jailed for molesting a child. That That's the loyalty you're, you're willing to go go towards. I mean, I, when she said things like, oh, I was loyal, I would have countered her right away with something snotty like that that would have been argumentative and misstating the evidence. But they weren't that, that uh, inappropriate with their questions, in my opinion. They were quite professional and cool-headed. So paraphrasing here, Ghislaine says, if it wasn't for her lies, that's speaking of Virginia, I wouldn't remember her. So in other words, there's so many people coming and going through the life of these two, these, this group, that if it wasn't for Virginia's lying on Ghislaine, she wouldn't even remember. And I want to come back and say to that, so then why the heck do you remember talking to her mother the whole entire time she was in there servicing Jeffrey? Why would you remember that? She remembers other things when it suits her to remember it, in my opinion, you know, Ghislaine remembers that the first time she met Virginia uh, at Jeffrey, you know, that when she came to Jeffrey's that it was her mother that drove her, not her father, according to Ghislaine, but she doesn't remember anything. Virginia's so forgettable. I mean, it, it makes no sense. So Ghislaine goes on a bit of a tangent talking about, you know, was, was Virginia the front of the house? worker at Mar-a-Lago or was she a bathroom attendant of, at Mar-a-Lago? Essentially, paraphrase, she's a damn liar. And I would come back to Jizz, Ghislaine, and say to her, um, you've listed like eight occupations here for Mr. Epstein that you've done. Do I mean, are you a liar? <laughs> I mean, if you work at Mar-a-Lago, I'm perfectly sure that, that you kind of multitask in that spot area. You might fold towels one day. What do you call yourself? The towel folder. You might clean the toilet one day. You'd be the toilet cleaner. You do more than one job. Okay? So, 
Ghislaine's got herself doing like eight occupations here for Jeffrey. And then any time the occupation gets touchy with some kind of criminal activity, she's gone. So to me, it, she's just the ultimate hypocrite. The ultimate hypocrite. All right, let's continue. So now we're on page 230 and Ghislaine Maxwell is now um, stating Florida law that one can be a professional masseuse but at the age of 17. So it's not illegal for her to hire or interview or whatever you want to call it, Virginia Roberts. So, so, so when did she get that little bit of Florida law under her belt? I mean, she sat there and said she didn't hire anybody under the age of 18. And now she's saying, you know, Florida law says age 17, so it's cool. Okay. So Sigrid gives Ghislaine Maxwell free reign on page 220. She's had it. She's had it with this. Everything that's gone wrong and misremembering and don't recalls is because Virginia's a lie. So let's, let's go ahead and page 220 and let's just give Ghislaine free reign to talk about Virginia's lies. And this is, this is really revealing because she, you know, uh, Ghislaine gives vent to what she thinks are Virginia's lies. So when asked about the photo of Virginia in Ghislaine Maxwell's home, oh, this one's rich. This is the answer. We can't really establish the photograph and all that. I don't know if that's true and that's a real picture or not. The picture of Prince Andrew with his hand around Virginia and Ghislaine in the background in her own damn townhouse with her own pictures and shit and the banister the whole nine. So Sigrid is literally asking Ghislaine about the picture of the townhouse, the wall, the railing, the banister. Like, duh, it's your own home, dummy. You gonna deny this, Ghislaine? All right? Yeah, she is. It's like me, like I said, denying the bottle cap art, denying the humidor, denying the antiques. I don't know if that's a real picture, you know? I, I don't know. Come on, it's you. It's you, homie, it's you. It's your house. Say what you wanna say, but pick a, pick a different answer. It can't be that Virginia's a liar, so therefore it didn't happen. The picture's not real. So then Ghislaine um, says that what Virginia said took place at Ghislaine's house. That all is an obvious lie. Everything's a complete lie. And it all goes back to the day one. Since she lied on day one, everything's a lie. Nothing can be trusted. The bathroom that she said things went on with Prince Andrew wouldn't support a, a bigger person. I mean, nothing is true. Oh, but mm, that could be my banister. It could be my painting. Ah, ah. I know. So, I love Sigrid. She says, do you agree that it's psychologically harmful to have sex with a minor? Again, this is a question where the answer is simply, oh God, yes. Yes, Sigrid. I totally agree. Let's put it on the record. I think it's psychologically harmful to have sex with a minor. These are the gimmies. What do you think? What do you think Ghislaine says to that? It's an easy answer, right? What are you asking me? That's what she answers. She is so defensive. What are you asking me? I'm asking you, do you agree it's psychologically harmful to have sex with a minor? And you know, she just didn't want to answer it. She simply didn't want to answer it. She would want sex defined. She would want minor defined. She would want psychologically damage defined. I mean, this is the kind of setup we have going on here that just makes you uh, that any jury would see straight through the answer to that is yes I think it's psychologically damage, damaging but I, I had no knowledge of it that, it's that simple and then you have credibility in my opinion Ghislaine Maxwell says she didn't hire people for Jeffrey Epstein that she simply interviewed them and that essentially Jeffrey would take a look at him, and if he didn't, you know, like him, then that was that. So, of course, you're going to bring people that are going to be suitable to his type, right? Oh, God. So, then some kind of evidence is shown that while Virginia Roberts was in Thailand, giving, there were some kind of instructions, allegedly tying in Ghislaine 
to meet another girl in Thailand. And, and Virginia had said um, in her testimony elsewhere that she that was a whole point of her going to Thailand was to learn professional massage and also to, I think, either recruit or bring another girl back for Jeffrey. And that she eventually, I believe, she met someone, she fell in love, and that was the end of it. Done with Jeffrey. Thank God. So there's some um, proof, allegedly, that tying in Ghislaine's um, cell phone or something to the Thailand because she was like basically hands off like I didn't have anything to do with her I didn't tell her to go anywhere I didn't you know like she was just a ghost she had nothing to do with anything but then when some information was put forth in front of her which some of the names are and the numbers are redacted so it's hard to follow um, she was just denying it denial so after pages of questions regarding Prince Andrew it, it, this is really amusing because there's something there's these puppets that were popular in Great Britain and England, and I forget the name of them. It's it it was like a car, not a cartoon. It was it, these realistic puppets, and they would they would um do these little skits. And so apparently there was one of these puppets of Prince Andrew, and that puppet was allegedly at the house in New York, the Manhattan Mansion in New York, and allegedly some rather racy things was done with this puppet. Um, to some, to not only Virginia, but another girl that later came forward. And so, of course, Ghislaine is asked about this puppet and she wants to distance herself or claim no knowledge. So, um, regarding Prince Andrew's puppet, Ghislaine finally admits that, because she, she tries to get specifics on what a puppet is. Is it a finger puppet? I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she does everything to try to not answer the question, but then she finally admits that a caricature of a redacted, I think that's Prince Andrew, because he's the only one that's known in this to have a puppet, um, was at Jeffrey's home. So she finally breaks down and admits there was a caricature puppet at Jeffrey's home. So, Ghislaine Maxwell doesn't remember any of the obscene allegations done with the puppet. Uh, Sigrid then asks, do you have a joint defense agreement with Jeffrey Epstein? I love how it's like the one thing about having the depot go back and forth, back and forth with topics. It keeps people off their toes. And to go from, say, like the puppets and talks about puppets and then da 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 and then just be like, do you have a joint <laughs> defense agreement? And she's like, you know what she says? I believe I do. So she admits at this point, and this is 2016, that she had a joint defense agreement with Jeffrey that really tells you all, also tells you all you need to know. Then we have a piece of evidence that's a list of telephone numbers. I do believe this is um, the book at different houses. So we have a New Mexico house. We have the mansion in New York. You have the Palm Beach house. You have the, the island, the pedophile island, you want to call it. You had a house in Paris. I think there were six or maybe even seven houses. There was definitely six houses. And I believe it was the Palm Beach house. I could be wrong. There was um, a book or whatever. And there was also computers that had printouts. So any time that Jeffrey was allegedly in any of these places, he had a list of contacts and he had lists of places people he could get massages from. And so his assistants, who Ghislaine claimed she was never one that did the, that kind of a job, getting the girls in. If you want to believe that go ahead but that that they would pull up this information so they had easy access to people um, at the different locations so massages all, all the time at least and she admits that Jeffrey got a massage at least once a day but almost all of the 30 accusers if they were repeat customers said that he got massages at least three times a day it was like eating regarding this list of telephone numbers again she gets butthurt um, because that some of these numbers were in some kind of a format and that format was stolen. Essentially it was, I believe, and I have this in another video or document and I should remember it, but I've just been into so many different cases. It was one of the people that worked there and they took it. And, um, so she's mad that it's stolen and you can tell she's very angry and she says, I believe that this is a, a copy of a stolen document and I would love to know how you guys got a hold of it. He gave it to the FBI. I think he tried to sell it. The guy's dead now, I believe. He tried to sell it 
And then he ended up giving it to the FBI. That's how, that's how you got, they got a hold of it. It's not rocket science, Ghislaine, okay? But, you know, she keeps repeating how the book was stolen. She's very, like I said, irritated over the fact it was stolen. It wasn't shredded or burnt like probably she probably would have liked it to be. But, yeah, it was turned over to the FBI. So, let's get in the home stretch here. Ghislaine Maxwell was allegedly just so forgetful and said that Jeffrey Epstein bought the townhouse for her and cars also. She had copped to that, that he bought her cars, but she said she had no outstanding loans for him, that she worked it off. And, you know, she just, when asked about the cars that he had purchased her, yeah, she just couldn't remember the cars. She couldn't, she couldn't tell him, tell Sigrid on the record under oath how many cars he bought her, what kind of cars, what year. She just couldn't remember. Must be nice. <laughs> you know, I've, I've had a car purchased for me by a family member and, you know, I remember that. Yeah, it must be nice to just have cars and homes and, you know, planes. Planes, trains, and autom automobiles. It must be nice. I mean, if we want reform, there's all kinds of reform. First, reform against sexual crimes, crimes against women, crimes against children. We also need to reform this kind of shenanigans, this financial white collar um, shenanigans. It just needs reforming. This is ridiculous, honestly. You look into this case, and I'm not just talking about the devils. I'm not talking about the sexual allegations. I'm talking about looking into the finances of this shit. You need reform. This, this kind of stuff is unacceptable. Bring it over. So she and Jeffrey, she admits, were emailing I, I say plotting, that's my opinion, uh, even in January 2015. That was five five years ago. Now he's dead, so they, they're not plotting right now anymore. But they were plotting because they were emails, and Jeffrey Epstein was telling Ghislaine essentially to offer a reward to rebut Virginia's testimony. So anyone who could come forward with bits of information to rebut Virginia Roberts' testimony Give them a reward. Reward could be another word for payoff, in my opinion. So they were communicating with each other regarding their statements to the press. Um, the rest of the depot, the end of the depot, of course, is comprised of an index where you can look up certain words and flip back. So if you wanted to say, look up, let's say the word Porsche, I'm just making it up, was in the depot. You could go. And to the back, and it says portion, and it'll show you every line and, and page to reference that. It's also real neat when you've got a redaction. Prince Andrew, perhaps, or Bill Clinton, or President Clinton, or whatever. Whatever, Trump, whatever you're interested in digging into that was, you just look under what becomes, what goes b before PR, and what comes after PR. And then you have the, the blacked out, and then you can be like, oh, that's that person. It's, it's, guys, first of all, the redactions are not consistent because you'll have the next sentence unredacted, so it's obvious who it was ahead of it. And also, it's the same, same size redaction. The, the, the uh, font letters are a certain number. Yeah, I mean, it's not rocket science. You can figure out what it is, especially if the person's come forward. So I have no problem redacting things for minors because they were minors at the time, if they're not in the public light, if they're in the public light now, I wouldn't see that they would have um, a problem with their name being unredacted. But then again, I mean, that's not the call that a court would make. Um, but yeah, the end of it is filled with the index. There's some long drawn out passages having to do with the flight logs that honestly, you can find the flight logs and just look for yourself. That's a lot easier than looking through blank sections of redactions where she's just trying to deny that she is the GM in question. So that is my take on the deposition released yesterday. I am sorry for getting um, irritated I, in a way. Um, I find this extremely annoying that her lack of candor, in my opinion, her inability to see past things. Even if, let's say, let's say Virginia fabricated the Ghislaine part of it to say, you know, 
this isn't a perhaps an abused girl maybe she's not remembering correctly or you know being sympathetic to the situ the plight of these victims i see not sympathy i see someone that feels they're above it i sense someone that is not held accountable for her actions and probably never has been that someone that thinks they're better than other people. I mean, it's all over the deposition, the way she speaks, the way she pounds tables, the way just her demeanor, the way that, you know, can we tally the lies? I mean, it is. And then when she's countered with her actions of supporting a pedophile, then all of a sudden she's just a loyal person, but yet in the same breath, she's still getting money from him. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, uh, I, I I don't support it. I, I have no time for it. I, I think it's disgusting. <laughs> and if she gets a kind of a verdict akin to the Nexium folks, I will be so disgusted. But then again, by that same token, I think there's a reason she's been in hiding <laughs> for so long. I think it'll be a case where she's just not going to want to show her face. I'm actually quite shocked that she was in the States because... Ew. The general public, there's a court of public opinion. We don't like you. <laughs> Ghislaine, we don't like you. Go away. Go, 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 go away. That's my opinion. She has a right to stay here, I suppose, but and we don't have to like her. And we can keep, we can keep children far, far away from this, I want to say creature, but this woman. So. I hope this video was edifying. Thank you so much for your subscriptions. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. I really do appreciate it during this time of COVID. It's been very trying. Um, it's It's been difficult on all of us. And I, I just appreciate your interaction so much. And without further ado, have an excellent day. Bye.